put it around you so we can get into this because this is another episode of my skin diary. Like I said in the last video, um, I wanted to make these kind of like a weekly thing or whenever I had a little update about my skin. And today, if you follow me on Twitter, Twitter Abra Luisa Rios, go follow. Um, you'll know that I actually went to see my dermatologist. We're actually gonna talk about what she told me at my appointment and my progress. Um, this is what my skin looks like right now. So it doesn't look that much different from last time, kind of still dealing with that whole breakout that I got. So if you're interested in finding out, keep watching. But if you watched my video last week, you know that I was struggling with a huge, crazy breakout of these little pustule-like pimples, not my usual cystic acne. Um, and this is after Accutane. I've been off of it for like a year and a half now, I think. Um, so my doctor, not my dermatologist, who I got to see first, put me on clindamycin gel, um, just for the meantime until I could see my dermatologist. This is what my skin looks like after probably a week and a half of using the clindamycin. Obviously, I actually, I think it's gotten a little better. It's not as crazy red. I don't know, has it gotten better? You tell me, it's, it's really hard for me to tell. Today was the day that I could finally go and see my dermatologist, which I've been looking forward to for a really long time because I just moved to California in October. So this is a new dermatologist and I have a lot of hopes that maybe someone new can take me on and figure this out. So basically when I went in today, we had never met before. She didn't know my history. So I did have to tell her about how I took Accutane about five times since I was 13 or 14 years old probably. Um, and basically that I was just on spironolactone and I didn't like it. So I expressed to her all my concerns and I told her that I don't think it's cystic anymore and she agreed with me that actually I do have maybe one or two that are not so bad, but um, it seems like the spironolactone and the doxycycline did actually help with the kind of cystic breakouts I was getting in March because my acne at the beginning of quarantine, like I said in my previous video, was not like small like this. It was like the inside, under the skin, really red and painful kind of breakout. So in a way, maybe spironolactone did help. Um, but yeah, obviously now I have this sort of acne that I don't know what it was caused by and I did say in my last video I thought it could be the spironolactone or an ordinary product that I put on my face. We did kind of talk about Accutane. Obviously it really worked for me. This is a video of my skin on Accutane. Um, my skin looked unreal. It was amazing. So we did talk about that at the beginning and she did express to me that it seems like what I went through was what they do kind of in Europe and Asia I guess because I took it in South Korea. Um, which is like a longer trial of Accutane where they do a smaller amount and they kind of space it through a longer period of time. And that is exactly what I did. Um, I don't know my exact dosage, but I did that for eight months each time. She did express to me that she was thinking that it's possible that I may not have reached that threshold with Accutane that actually is what makes it work permanently. They need to find, you know, a, a certain amount a dose that actually works for your body and will get rid of it so now she was telling me what they're doing and if anyone is doing this please let me know how it's going for you what they do now in america is shorter like treatment time so instead of eight months it would probably be way shorter than that they give you a way higher dosage now i don't know how much time or the dosage because we didn't talk that in depth about it because I do kind of want to try other things before going back into Accutane. Side effects would be obviously amplified, but you experience them for a shorter amount of time. So I didn't really have any side effects on Accutane, except for probably, you know, chap lips. Um, the thing is, if I did experience hair loss, I wouldn't have noticed because I have so much hair and it's just like, it wouldn't have made a difference probably. And if I had depression, you know, it went unnoticed and I just probably dealt with it. 
Um, I was at university and was just really sad at that time. So it's very possible that it did affect my mental state, except I can't tell you for sure. So I don't want to go ahead and say, you know, Accutane gave me this side effect or that side effect because all I really noticed was like chap lips, but you know, it wasn't anything crazy for me. You know, worst case scenario, yes, it's possible I could go on Accutane again. Who knows? And that is crazy to me. Um, obviously my skin on Accutane was the best skin I'll ever have. It was better than baby's skin. So yeah, I'd love to go back and get that skin again. But taking a pill so many years of my life for so long, I'm not gonna cry in this video. I am not gonna cry in this video. It's just, it put me through so much, you know? And it's just like that false sense of, oh my God, I finally did it. This is the time I finally have clear skin permanently because they told me this works and I know it, it's going to. Having that happen so many times and then it failing, that is so, so, so tiring and so upsetting. And so I don't know if I want to go through that with Accutane again. But basically what we decided on is to keep me on the doxycycline because um, she thinks that if I do have cystic acne, which I do, um, it might come back in a few months if I'm not taking something to kind of combat the ones that are hiding under the layer of skin that I see. I'm gonna be taking 100 mg. Um, very important with doxycycline, and I wasn't told this by my previous doctor who gave me doxycycline, so maybe you weren't, and this is gonna be useful for you. Doxycycline, she said, if you take just with your saliva or just with a sip of water, it can get stuck in your throat and start to dissolve in your throat. And she had a patient who got sick for a couple of weeks, had to go to the hospital because she wasn't taking it properly and it was hurting her throat. Also, she was saying to take it with a full glass of water and make sure to sit up for an hour before going to bed, if you're taking it right before going to bed. So yeah, obviously you have to eat before taking it as well. Doxycycline makes you extremely photosensitive, so you cannot go out into that sun without putting on sunscreen everywhere. And with sunscreen, she was saying um, to put it on 20 minutes before you leave the house, so that kind of gets into the skin. Another thing that she gave me is this Trentinoin cream, which I actually don't know if I've tried this or not before. And I think she's saying that this is supposed to help with kind of texture, and also it's gonna help with um, any scarring that I might get. So yeah, just like this little tube. I'm kind of scared, I don't know. I've, I don't know if I've tried this or not, so I'm not sure, but she was saying that this can cause you to kind of purge in the first 10 days of using it. So it's gonna kind of get all the impurities that are hiding under there and bring them to the surface and get rid of them and treat them. She's saying it's possible my skin can get really red, really dry, really irritated first 10 days and not to be shocked. So you guys are, are probably gonna see that next week or the week after. Um, I'm kind of excited to see if that's true now that I'm doing these diaries. Just telling me with the Trentinoin, it's really important that I'm using a good moisturizer. So I told her I was using this 100% plant-derived squalene from The Ordinary. Um, and she said she loves squalene and it's great because um, squalene doesn't clog the pores apparently. It's like it, it's not as clogging, which is what I also heard online, which is what made me want to buy it. And I've been using it as well for about two days and it hasn't broken me out like the rosehip seed oil did. So I do really like the squalene so far. However, she did say that if I'm using just the squalene, that's not enough and I need to be using a moisturizer to repair the barrier of my skin. She recommended to me um, the ones you can buy at, you know, a drugstore are CeraVe, she said, or La Roche Posay, I think it's called. They sold one there that I actually purchased. Oh my god, they gave me so much chapstick. They said she's crusty. <laughs> look at this. Wow, that's really nice. I really like Aquaphor actually. Do I look like I need chapstick? I think I look pretty quenched. I bought this um, lotion at the dermatology office. It's called Elta MD PM Therapy. It repairs and restores elasticity and vitality. 
facial moisturizer oil free and she was saying um this one has niacinamide in it and actually i bought a niacinamide from the ordinary so i'm thinking of starting to use it if i'm doing this i don't know that might be too much you guys let me know so yeah basically what she told me about my skin is that it looks like right now what it needs is exfoliation and that actually makes a lot of sense to me because i feel like in march when i kind of got into researching about what was going on with my skin and trying to understand um i realized i was over exfoliating my skin was really shiny and felt really tight and i looked at a lot of my products and yes they were all really harsh exfoliants so after that i feel like i kind of went back on it a little bit and my skin looked really good for like a week, but then definitely like this started to happen. So I I can see where maybe I have been under exfoliating. She was also saying I could look into having an uh, uh, actual esthetician, you know, um, doing an extraction. So if you guys are going through something like this, she did say that that would help. She said that what we're gonna go for is doing um, kind of an exfoliating thing, but more over a longer period of time instead of doing just like an extraction. Yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I will be updating you guys in a week to see if the Trentinoin does speak out my face. I'm really excited to see, strangely enough. Let me know if you guys have any questions about anything I talked about. Let me know your experiences with Trentinoin or doxycycline or any of the things I talked about from The Ordinary as well. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. My Instagram is a Brill L Rios and my Twitter is a Brill Louisa Rios. Bye! <laughs>